allow me, I'm going to start by introducing Jeff Campos. He is the Executive Director of the Global Chamber here in Denver. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope many of you were upstairs. It was really, all the energy upstairs was really exciting to have the President there and, and our Mayor, uh, Michael Hancock. So we're here today for a press conference and uh, get to really get an insight from really the people you want to hear from. President Fox, who's going to be here for the next couple of days, and our, our Mayor, Michael B. Hancock. So let me introduce to you, Michael. Jeff, thank you very much. And, and again, we want to thank the uh, Global Chamber of Commerce for the tremendous work they did in linking up uh, this opportunity to have uh, the president, former president of Mexico here, uh, President Vicente Fox. I just want to just very briefly tell you that the president and I had a, a brief conversation in my office before coming over here. We're excited about his visit. Of course, it's a, a very uh, good time for him to be visiting Denver and visiting the United States of America. Uh, as conversations are raging in Washington with regards to the North American treat, uh, Free Trade Agreement, uh, we did talk about the importance of and the impact of NAFTA uh, since its uh, uh, implementation and about the jobs that have been created, about the fact that uh, Mexico has remained steady and strong as our second uh, trading partner uh, to Colorado and uh, to the city of Denver. Uh, and so I'm excited about his visit here because I think he serves as uh, a symbol of the opportunity and success that that agreement has meant to us here in Colorado and uh, certainly has meant with regards to the creation of jobs and the creation of viable business opportunities for our entrepreneurs and businesses here in Colorado and in the city of Denver. So with that, I'm really excited to bring up the president. And uh, if he wants to make a few opening words, and then we'll do a question and answer. President Vicente Fox. Thank you very much, Major. Uh, thank you very much to the Chamber, the Global Chamber, for this invitation. I'm very pleased to be here in uh, the city of Denver, in this great state of Colorado. My first surprise is that great news that this uh, city is taking some steps to make sure that the rule of law in this city is applied fairly it's applied without any discrimination. It's always caring for citizens that inhabit in this great city. I think that's great for the world that I'm heavily related to, the Hispanics, the Latins, the Mexicans, that so highly contribute to the well-being of this nation, to the growth of this nation, to the competitiveness of this economy. So thank you very much, city of Denver, for taking that step. That I hope it's going to be an example for the rest of the United States. The rest I'm here with the measure to build bridges. One proposal I made and one step we took is I do have a special one hour special on national TV in Mexico that also covers part of the United States, the Hispanic world, to invite the major, Michael, to sit down and have a dialogue on this purpose of building bridges, of working together, in not only in trading, but also in many other things that we can exchange uh, between our two nations. I just end up by telling you that half of what you he see here is American blood. My grandfather was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, and he migrated down to Mexico looking for his American dream. He's one of these heroic uh, special caste migrants that are around the world always looking to do better, always looking to improve their lives and the lives of their families, always looking to uh, build a much better world, a world full of love, full of compassion, full of a great relationship and friendship. And that's, that's what I am here for. And I know in this city, uh, we're going to have a lot of great dialogues and uh, conferences so that people here get the feeling of what's Mexico today, what Mexico is all about, not the image deteriorated that today is heard here in United States. 
Mexico has dignity, Mexico has courage, Mexico has capacities, Mexico is working hard to attend all of our people right there, down there. Today we're at full employment in Mexico. Our rate of unemployment is now down to 3%. And in the case of the state of Guanajuato and the Bajio region, we are full 100% employment. Every single family and person has a job there. So we're doing our best to retain our people and to be up to a solid partner of this great nation. The economy of the Bajio in those three states that compose the Bajio is running from 8 to 10 percent growth of gross domestic product. So thank you for this invitation, Major, and I hope we can be here as friends, neighbors, and partners. Ladies and gentlemen, just one last reminder again, we have a hard stop in 30 minutes. Um, your questions can be asked in both English and Spanish. And again, let's focus on the topics that are, were shared with you in that press release. Thank you so much. President, uh, how do you see the changing demographics of, of Denver and the Rocky Mountain region as, as remaining viable as a business trade partner between the United States and Mexico? Uh, as you know, we are very complementary economies. Mexico has youth energy, plenty of it. United States population is getting elderly. And I think there is no best combination but working together as partners, uh, using our resources and our strengths to make North America the strongest, most successful, most competitive region in the world. It's done great for Mexico. It is done great for United States. It is done great for Canada. Give you a figure in Mexico that I think it encompasses a summary of the result after one generation or 23 years of NAFTA. When NAFTA started, a Mexican worker or a Mexican person would make the equivalent of one dollar in the Mexican side when by crossing the border, by coming to this great nation, you would be making 10. So the gap or the ratio was 10 to 1. Today, it's 5 to 1. So it has reduced considerably, and that is why we see the trend reversed. Now more Mexicans are coming back to our country than those coming to the United States. So I think that's, that's a key issue that NAFTA provoked in Mexico. But United States, I use another example. Uh, not long ago, General Motors, Chrysler, Ford Motor Company went broke. All three of them huge manufacturing automobile companies. And they were broke because they couldn't compete anymore. So U.S. taxpayers had to invest billions and billions and billions of dollars to rescue from bankruptcy those three corporations. Today, those three corporations have become NAFTA corporations, and they are back to being competitive again. And now they are expanding their market share, now they're expanding their profits, and now they're expanding the jobs, both in Canada, in the United States, and Mexico. So trading among ourselves is a win, win, win situation. It's not what is claimed by somebody here in this nation. That is a zero zone. That what you gain, the other one loses in trading. That's an absolute ignorance of how the economy works. I will end up saying that this economy has regained its competitiveness, it's expanding and growing because we're associated, the three of us. 
that Mexico is not the little guy on the backyard. What Mexico buys from this nation accounts for at least 10 million direct U.S. jobs for U.S. citizens. If you uh, take away NAFTA, immediately that same day, this nation will lose 10 million direct jobs for U.S. citizens. In that very same day, the cost of the products that are bought here in this nation, like food, like vegetables, like fruits, like avocados, like tequila, like cars, like computers, will cost the American consumer 30% more of what he's paying today. So the consequences of not doing an intelligent, wise decision about NAFTA is going to be extremely costly for this nation. President Fox, President Trump has called NAFTA one of the worst deals ever. You've been a sharp critic of our president. Are you concerned that NAFTA can withstand this level of political discourse? This narrow-sided comment is wrong because U.S. economy has deficit with every single economy in the world. So every single partner of the United States in trading, every single trade agreement this nation has with other economies would be wrong, according to the vision of uh, President Trump. So U.S. economy works different. You don't measure the success of this economy by its surplus on trading. Because as I said, it's a deficit with every single economy. And Mexico is not the largest deficit. It's much larger the deficit with China, with Germany, with France, with Canada. So that is not a good analysis of how the economy works. Does a renegotiation of NAFTA weaken our ability and Mexico's ability to trade worldwide? Absolutely, yes. The U.S. economy will lose competitiveness. I showed an example. If companies like General Motors, like Ford or Chrysler, are forced back to produce in the United States, they will go broke again. They will lose market share. They cannot compete with Mazda, with Nissan, with Volkswagen, with Mercedes-Benz. And let's go back in history that this man needs to read a little bit about history. A hundred years ago, President Hoover took exactly the same public policies. In trying to defend jobs in the United States, he taxed imports for products coming from abroad to the United States. And number two, he advised and forced U.S. corporations to manufacture within the United States. Result? The mammoth depression of 1929. That's what President Hoover provoked implementing exactly the same public policies that are being pretended to implement by somebody that doesn't know how economy works. By the way, economy is not a business. Running a nation is not the same as running a business. President Fox, do you feel that there are some companies in Mexico that are hesitant to do business in the U.S. because of attitudes towards immigration and our policies like the one you mentioned set here in Denver? Do you think that is an asset to the business community? Well, I guess everybody is worried about a myopia on whoever is taking economic decisions in this nation. Yes, Mexican companies are afraid, have fear. Mexican paisanos here, Latins uh, here, Hispanics here in the States, have fear because of the aggressive language, the violent language that is being used against them. But fear is not a good advisor. It's not going to take the United States to a better situation. And building walls is not the way you avoid fear. So. I think we should use more wisdom. We should use more uh, relying on history. We should make sure that we've been friends for long, 
that we being neighbors forever and that we being partners now for 22 years. You cannot just disrupt. You cannot just become a destroyer and destroy what we have built with such a huge effort, with such a huge sacrifice on both of our three nations that partner in NAFTA. I cannot imagine moving the center of leadership of the earth to the east. A leader, a great leader like this great nation cannot renounce to its leadership. You just cannot do that. Or you leave an empty space that somebody else is going to fill up. And China is eager to fill up this space. Russia is eager to fill up this space. They are already inviting Mexico and Latin America to come. We're meeting to keep discussing TPP, the Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement. We all, the rest of the nations, we keep on going with it. The only nation or economy that is isolating itself by its own will is the United States. The rest of us, we understand what trade is all about. We understand that trade is a win-win situation. And we understand that to be successful trading, you have to be competitive. You have to educate your people. You have to build human talent. You have to move ahead on innovation and creativity. And we don't hear those words. Those are the right words on today's world to become competitive, to be innovative. That's the way to go, not to build walls, not to close your borders, not to nationalize your economy, because it will asphyxiate by itself. No economy in the world can survive on its own and individually. We all trade, we all form blocks, we all work together. It's, it's being said, and we have discussed a long time ago, that NAFTA can be improved. Every human institution can be improved and moved ahead. We discussed in my term with President Bush administration, and we put it together what we call a NAFTA plus. That will be a step forward ahead of the NAFTA that we developed 22 years ago. And then, Immediately we worked on, and all the documents are in Congress, and all the documents are in the White House, and all the documents are in the hands of U.S. government of what we call partnership for security and for prosperity. We decided then that security should be one ingredient, and we've been working hard against drug cartels. It's not what people think, that we Mexicans have gone crazy or that we have that we're drinking too much tequila, and why are we killing each other? We're killing each other because of the cartels, because of the money the cartels raise in this nation, 55 billion U.S. dollars. They are very powerful because of the money they raise with U.S. consumers of drugs. So Mexico is doing a job for the United States in trying to withhold the drug that is not being produced in Mexico, that is produced in Colombia, produced in Venezuela, produced in Ecuador and Bolivia. Mexico is not a drug-consuming nation significantly. We don't produce drugs significantly. The state of California produces more marijuana and of a much better quality than all that we can produce in Mexico in the whole of the country. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I have not tasted it. I have not tried it. Intelligence, strategy, dialogue with people. Mexico cannot become a Venezuela. Mexico cannot become a Cuba. 
Mexico cannot live by populism and demagoguery like Argentina, that with the Kirchner administration they went broke, or like other nations. So Mexico is different. Mexico believes in the market. Mexico believes in freedom. Mexico believes in hard work. Mexico believes in full respect to human rights. And Lopez Obrador is just another Chavez, another Maduro, and he will not get there. He promised that he's going to take away my pension plan that I received as former president. First, he has to get to be president, and then he can think about taking away my pension, which is legal, by the way, and that I enjoy a lot, by the way. Let's go back and go to No, absolutely. That, that will uh, promote, enhance business doing, enhance the relationship. And it's, it's nothing special. It's the way every city should have. It's just the right application of rule of law. In Mexico, nobody asks Americans that are there by the thousands their passport when they are in a bar or they are walking on the street or they are enjoying a musical uh, concerto. No country asks you for a passport when you, just because you're on the street. So I, I think it's the right step. I think this city is showing the rest of the United States and the rest of the world that you attend your people, that you do your very best for the people that live in your city, for the people that work in your city, for the people that contribute, contribute to the growth of the city. Five minutes. How can you influence so they don't take away DACA from our current students now? Don't take away what? The DACA program ah. for the students. How can I only, if my grandfather was alive, he was a U.S. citizen, he could influence, but I, I just say what I think. And I just uh, speak as a partner, as a friend of this nation. And... Uh, I'm sure many, many, many people in this nation listen and know what should be done. I really think that preventing, limiting access to education is criminal. It's criminal. And let me tell you one, and with this maybe we finish, one message I heard from Colin Powell when he speaks publicly, he says, he says, United States is making a mistake. He's seeing the future with myopia by preventing minorities to go to school, by, in a way, not considering minorities as regular citizens. He said, because minorities will be majorities in this nation pretty soon. Even if Senor Trump doesn't want that, if he don't like brownies or he don't like dark colors, this nation is moving in that direction. To the better of this nation, to the better of this nation. So what is better than all living together all working together, all building together. That is by far the best approach to development and to growth. We have time for one more question, guys, and then we're going to break out into one-on-ones. Anyone have a final question? Sir, Thank you. are you going to see the wall? <laughs> you guys <have> to mention? <laughs> <laughs> the fucking wall. That does not exist, will never exist. There is a wall. There is a wall already built. And what has happened? Nothing. It, it doesn't work. It will not serve the purpose that is intended to. Let me briefly describe that bill that is in Congress prepared bipartisan and by two administrations, because I feel proud that my administration participated in
bringing in some ingredients to that bill. That bill solves the problem of migration wisely using your intelligence. That's what it does. And it has a solution for the 11 million so-called illegal or undocumented. Nobody knows how many they are. And what better thing could happen that every one of those, whatever number they are, would have an ID, would have an identity. So what that bill considers is that all of those that do have a job, that are working for somebody in this nation, they should have the right to stay as long as they keep that job. If they are fired, or that corporation, or that family doesn't need them anymore, then they should go back to Mexico. Number two, and this is something that this guy doesn't know, this economy, by growing at two, two and a half percent, needs over half a million new workers to come from abroad to keep this economy, its dynamism, and its growth. So that's absolutely mandatory. It's anybody that knows the figures knows that. And number three, it is criminal to separate families. It is criminal to have the kids in Mexico and the father and the mom here, or to have the father here and the wife in Mexico. So that initiative, that bill considers that all those who are accountable, either because they do have a job or they are already documented, do have the right to have their families here. So that's very simple, and that's the way it can work. And Mexico signed that and committed to that, that those that are going to be coming back, we will absorb them, we will take them back. But let's treat people with dignity, with humanism, with respect. That's the most important part of it. Gracias.